Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well today. Coming at you with another video of what I sold from April 1st to April 7th, 2019. These are a selected few items I sold on eBay. I want to show you some of the good items I've sold in, some of the bad, not too many flops this <laughs> this video, maybe one or two. So, um, just being real with you, my name is Paul Apollonia. I uh, specialize in selling on eBay. I saw a lot of uh, parts. I part out appliances, vacuum cleaners, as you can see in the first listing, washers, dryers. I also do a lot of um, consignment. I love consignment. Consignment's not for everyone. I like it. It works for, for my business model. And I'm going to uh, show you some tips and tricks and what to avoid. And like I said, some of the mistakes I made. So let's get started here. Here is a piece of a Dyson, vac Dyson vacuum cleaner. Actually, I saw this next to a dumpster at a thrift store on Sunday when it was closed. So either it was broken, the vacuum cleaner, or whatever. But I grabbed it, um, listed it, did the best I could. I cleaned it up the best I could. I tried my best to clean the items up prior to me listing them. Um, like I said in my other videos, if you're new to this and, and if you've seen these before, sorry if I'm repeating some of this stuff, but I want to make sure that the new people understand what I'm doing. So when they're listing something, they can do the same and it'll avoid a lot of questions and returns. I always put the, um, I get a picture of the model number and such the tag from the item I'm parting out, get a nice clear picture. And I put that in every one of the listings for that item, like this vacuum cleaner here. So um, basically that's what I did here. I sold this uh, last uh, Saturday night. I make sure I use all the item specifics, model number, even if I gotta go out to Google and do some searching, there's a lot of uh, parts websites you can get the actual part number from. That's what I did here. I found one on eBay, but I verified also through Google and part sites. My descriptions are very short. 80% of the sales on eBay are done through smartphones and smart devices. People don't have time to read long descriptions. It's okay if you want to put that stuff in there, but if you're going to do that, put it at the bottom. Put your uh, stuff pertaining to your item way at the top. Title is clear, as you can see, basically what it is and the um, the part number for that item. So I did pretty good on this. I probably made, I'm trying to think what this the shipping was. I probably made about $28 on this, maybe $27 on this. Not bad for something I found in the trash. All I had to do was unclip it, pull it out, clean it. it. It was listed within a few minutes. Here is one of the South of the Border bumper stickers. I keep on forgetting to up the price on these or do something with these because I'm not making a whole lot of money on these. They're very light. They're one ounce. Now, I could throw a, a stamp or two on there and do it a lot cheaper. But if I do that, I lose tracking information and I don't get the uh, shipping credit on, on eBay. eBay wouldn't back me up if it got lost. So what I end up doing is, unfortunately, I go and I print it out via the post office website and ship it out first class. That way, it costs me probably $2.29 two, two to ship it. So I'm not making much money on these. I grab these south of the border stickers when I'm passing south of the border. Is uh, South of the border is an attraction, sort of a tourist trap, kind of a weird place. You need to stop there if you're passing by. It's, uh, it's really kind of different. It's uh, on the border of South Carolina and North Carolina. I get these, I think they're five or 10 cents a piece. So I grab a bunch. But what I did last time I passed was I grabbed a lot of these and I also grabbed a lot of other information brochures. I'm going to put them in a bundle. I know I said this last video and I'm going to sell them probably for about $10 for the three of them. So I make some money. If people buy multiples of these, I make okay. You know, I make a couple bucks, but when you're buying one at a time, eh, not so much. 
So let's go on to the next one. I guess that's one of the flops. Uh, dryer parts do really well. I get uh, a lot of uh, dryers, washers, appliances off a of Craigslist free section. What I do there again for people that have seen this before, I'm going to repeat myself. I create a, a Craigslist email alert. Basically, you do that through Craigslist. What that does is that you set it up to look for whatever you're looking for. Like I'm looking for dryers, washers, lawnmowers, chainsaws, whatever you're looking for. And you can do different sections. And But I look in the free section. So anytime somebody would be giving away a dryer or a washer, it would ding my email. Now, back in the old days, it would ding it really quick, like almost immediately. Nowadays, not so quick. But uh, I'm still able to get a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff for free. Just make sure if you're going to get stuff on Craigslist, please, please, please show up. Everybody hates no-shows, and if you're being nice enough to go get something from somebody, please show up. It's, it's just not right. And again, here is the tag from the dryer itself. It's always the last picture when I'm showing something I'm parting out. Here is a power supply. These are the printers you throw away. These are the um, the inkjet cheapy printers, believe it or not. I couldn't believe somebody gave me this printer. And I thought, what am I going to do with this? It's not even working. Well, I looked it up and uh, seems that the power supply sells for, I probably made $18 on that. And I also sold the print head a couple months ago off of this. I didn't make a whole lot of money off of that. I probably made nine bucks, but uh, it's like 30 bucks in my pocket. Took me one screw to take this off. Let me see if I have a picture of the one screw where the attach. There it is. There's a Phillips screw right here that you just unscrew and it slips right out and you're done. And I try and take pictures of the uh, the part number and everything and I bet you I don't have the picture of the printer model like I just said I do on all my items oh well let's go on to the next one sorry for the delay here I don't know what's going on uh, this is from a Dyson vacuum cleaner in previous videos I told you I bought two Dysons at a garage sale for I think ten dollars a piece I probably made a hundred bucks profit in my pocket from the parts. Now these are some of these parts are what they call long tail sales. You're going to have them in your eBay store or in eBay for a while. This probably sat for over a year. Not a big dollar sale. It went out first class about four ounces. So I, I, I made just a couple bucks on this, but it was a quick ship. Just the wheels were apart already. I think I had them in a little Ziploc bag. I just wrapped everything in bubble wrap threw it in a poly envelope, and it was gone within a few minutes. I average sale profit on eBay for me is $15 to $20 on average, $25 maybe. I, I do make more, but on the average, that's what I make on each item. Obviously, some are much less, like you saw with the bumper sticker and the set of wheels there, but my business model is a sale is a sale. Um, I'm happy if, you know, if I make a couple bucks, it's a quick ship, quick list. It's done. It's out of here. I'm good. For example, here's this uh, vacuum cleaner part. I found this vacuum cleaner on the side of the road. It was trash day, and it was sitting next to a trash can. So I grabbed it. I sold the motor already out of this for $15, and I sold this front piece. This is a little front piece that covers the HEPA filter. Um... Again, not a big time sale. Probably made about six bucks off of this. But uh, quick list, as you can see, three pictures, front and back, or I guess just the front. <laughs> um, couple item specifics, short description. I was done in a few minutes. Sold, uh, sold in probably about a week, and took me uh, two minutes to ship it out.
here is a uh, part from a washer. Uh, I'm sorry, a refrigerator. It's a relay. Somebody gave me a bunch of parts. They were trying to fix their their um, refrigerator, and they obviously didn't know what they were doing. So they gave me all these parts. They said, here, just take them. I don't want them. So I actually had these in a box for a while. I didn't realize I still had them. Excuse me. And I made uh, pretty good money on this. Got it for nothing. Took two minutes to list it. I didn't put a whole lot of specifics in there because I couldn't find too much. Uh, went first class, couple ounces. So I made money all around on this. I probably made about $18 on this, $19. Not bad for getting something for free. All these connections I have with getting free stuff, a lot of it is through my consignment business. A lot of people find out I do consignment. I talk to them and I meet with them. And they go, okay, let me think about it. And then they call me back and they go, you know, I thought about it. Here's just come get the stuff for free. So it works for me, the consignment. Here is an item I've talked about before. Bosch dishwashers, the racks go for some seriously big dollars. Here's one right here. And I had this for a while. Took me a while to find the, uh, the part number on this, but um, I had it, it's been listed for probably two or three months. Um, I normally don't do free shipping, but when I see the vast majority of the solds are free shipping, I just go with that. I bumped the price up enough to guesstimate what the shipping would be. I uh, sold this to somebody in California. I think it went, you know, uh, it went post office, parcel post. I insured it because you don't get insurance on parcel post. Um, also, what I do is how I ship these. Very simple. I used to get a big box with packing uh, bubble wrap and wrap it. I don't do that anymore. I just get a box, cut it, and basically fold it around it, almost Frankensteining a box around it, making a box around the, the rack. And this is about the sixth or seventh one I've shipped out like that and have not had a problem. This one had the extra rack on it. This back rack here, I could have sold this separately, which I probably should have. Probably could have made a little bit more money. But notice um, it's got some rust on the bottom. On underneath, I made sure I stated that in the listing. See, I stated just before another video that you can even sell these things rusty. I stated that it's got some rust in some spots. I'll show you where in the listing I did that. Pretty simple listing. This one I used a white back, uh, a white project board from uh, the dollar store, and I even that backdrop there is the uh, project board that you see at the dollar store that folds out like a three-way thing. And there's pictures of the rust, more pictures of the rust, more pictures, almost like you're really killing yourself here with the pictures of the rust. I want to make sure that the buyer knows what they're getting more pictures of rust. And there is the tag from the dishwasher. Uh, I made about $62 on this after fees. I think it, it, it didn't go that far shipping wise. And here is a description. There is a very small amount of rust on a few of the ends. Please review all photos. And I showed you those photos. I put in all the item specifics. I even put, um, that which actually i'll be honest with you i copied this listing for somebody else and i should not have put this in here that is not good because i never did remove the rust or sealed anything so they could have returned it on me i didn't even realize that was in there see there's a <laughs> a mess up on my part Whew. <laughs> that was good because uh, shipping that back would, you know, I would have lost money on that one. But there's the, um, basically, the rack. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, keep an eye on the Bosch dishwashers out there that you get for nothing. Sometimes I find them on the side of the road. If I don't have my van, I've been known just to pull the racks out and move on. Take a picture. I always take a picture of the model number when I see something. If I can't take the whole unit, and I pull whatever I can off of it. 
let's move on to the next item. I hope all these tips and tricks are helping you guys out. And I hope just these videos are helping you guys out. Here is a uh, hinge off of a Whirlpool washer. I've talked about this washer and dryer thing before. I got these from Craigslist a couple of months ago. Guy said, hey, I got the dryer. Do you want the dryer too? I said, sure. And I've probably made $450 profit off the washer. And I've made probably $175 profit off the dryer parts. So there's money out there in parts. I took all different angles. Actually, funny story here is I was trying to sell the whole door assembly, the door with the hinge on it. And I had that listed for a couple of months and it wasn't selling. So I ended up just tossing, uh, taking the hinge off and just tossing the door away because it wasn't selling. And I made, you know, 15 bucks on, on the on the hinge itself. I shipped it out in a... Um, what do you call it? padded flat rate envelope for seven seventy six or seven eighty? I forget total cost. So that was a cheap ship to me for me out to California. There is the tag off the washer. Last photo, like I always said. Here is a lawnmower bag. I had this in my garage for I'll be honest with you, a couple years. I just never got around to listing it. I, I pulled it off a mower and the model number wasn't matching up. One time I looked it up and I couldn't figure it out. So last week I just sat there and scrolled through eBay. I searched rear lawnmower bags and just, you know, scrolled through at my leisure. I was watching TV and lo and behold, I found an exact match. So I got all the information and I listed it and I sold it within one day. Didn't price it real high because, to be honest with you, I just want to get rid of these bags or take them room. Didn't make a whole lot of money off of this. Uh, this went in in a 12 by 14, two 12 by 14 boxes that I got from uh, one of the big box uh, hardware stores. What I did was I just telescoped the two boxes, put one together, put one on top, slid it, slid it down until it was the same size as the grass catcher, sealed it up, and it was done. It's a quick ship. Um, I don't, I, I'd be lucky if I made probably $15 on this, maybe $16. I just sold one the other day and only made $10 on it, but these things are taking up room. I don't know what else to do with them. I don't want to throw them out. So I'm just doing this just to make some extra money. Um, let me show you. I always, I am crazy with the measurements with these things to make sure people know what they're getting. The opening the latch for the bag, and that is the part number that I got off of the mower. I am had some questions on that, if that was correct or not, but I figured I would list it, show it. Um, here's some of the model numbers it fits. I Googled the, um, the mower model number and found the bag and a part number and put that in there. It takes some work to do all this stuff, but it's just not that difficult. <clears throat> Remember, I'm getting this stuff for nothing free. Most of the time people are bringing this stuff to me or I'm going very locally and getting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a pair of, um, what are these things? Some kind of sandals. Um, I got from a uh, Amazon seller. I was doing a lot of consignment for him back a couple of years ago. Uh, Amazon sends returns back like crazy. So he has a whole storage unit full of returns. I'd go up to his place every once in a while, grab a couple boxes. It was working out great that he decided to move on onto other Amazon venues more of training new sellers. So he's not selling anymore. And he said, heck, just keep everything you got. Don't worry about it. So that works for me. I made probably $24 on these and I probably got about four or five pairs left. Um, I always state no box because then I can put it in a smaller box, except for the last set I sold, pair I sold, I was able to um, just put the box in another box. It was local, it didn't cost me that much. There's a tag off the box. Like I said, every time I see a tag or information, it's always in the last photo of the listing. Here is another item. Didn't make a whole lot of money on this. It's a consignment item. I'm consigning a bunch of stuff for this lady who's downsizing. So I made a ton of money off of a few things. And then at that point, I just grabbed little things just to help them out. Um, I probably made $7 on this. 
it is missing the rubber eyepiece, and I'll show you that right there. I'm again crazy with taking all this is done on the picnic table out front of my house. Nothing fancy. You can see the you can see the missing eyepiece right there. And I even have a close-up of it. I'm pretty sure I do. Well, that's a closer. <laughs> that's a closer close-up. There we go. Um, and I always take pictures of, like I said, the inside of trauma biscuit, the inside of the where the, um, the film goes, the film cartridge. I remember these things when I was a kid. You were like, you were a cat's meow if you had one of these uh, Polaroid cameras. And they're coming back. They've got new ones, but the old ones are, are coming back. So I didn't make a whole lot of money on that, but we're good. Got about four more items left here, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Here is another uh, consignment item I found. Clearing out two storage units for a friend of mine, both his mother and his wife's mother stuff. Tons of stuff. I was able to get about one half of one of the units cleared out. Just a lot of stuff. And he ended up wholesaling the rest of the units to somebody else, which was fine with me because I was it was getting way over my head and I was running out of room. And he was nice enough to say, keep anything under a hundred dollars. Don't worry about it. I could have probably could have probably priced this higher. Uh, I didn't really fully test it because I don't have the ability to test it. Um it's not a name brand receiver, um, but it does go for some decent money. I priced it what I thought was fair. They were going for about $75 plus shipping. Since I don't know if it fully works, I was honest, the tuning needle is stuck, which means when you turn it, the, the dial doesn't move. Very easily fixed. I fixed them before in the past. Just put some wax from a candle on it or paraffin wax. You take the lid off and rubbed the, the string with some wax, but I didn't feel like doing all that. Um, I sold this thing within two hours. Uh, I made probably $57 after shipping. Went FedEx because it was in a big box. I wrapped the, um, the receiver in plastic and um, put, how did I ship this? I forget now. Did I use packing peanuts? I made sure I wrapped the receiver in plastic really tight because those packing peanuts go all over the place. Made sure I had a couple inches on each side. The guy got it immediately, sent me unique feedback. He was thrilled with it. Let me show you some of the problems here. This power button is broken. I made sure I took a picture of that. It does work. I just had to put the power button. Yeah, that's a handful. I had to place the power button back in, pressed it, and it worked. I have it up here. I also have the same information down here in the description, refer to photo number two. And that's the photo I showed you. I take pictures of all the sides, tops, bottoms, also very important. If you can take the top of the unit off, if you want and show the circuitry, that is up to you. Also very important, take a picture of the bottom. It shows any water damage on the unit. Very commonly, there's water damage on the bottom of these and people want to see if there is or is not. If there is, I would mark it down lower because there's some damage to the unit itself. But that was a great sale. I was thrilled with that. Saturday night I sold four items. I probably made $200 profit. Kind of weird. eBay sort of like <laughs> opens up every once in a while and you sell a bunch of stuff. Here is another consignment item. A friend of mine does some work with the restaurants. He was he got these POS terminals. I could get a lot more for these, but there's a lot of damage on the screens. Let me show you some of the damage. There's those. I know it's just from people hitting their fingers and their hands up being clean, I guess. Um, I make sure I state that there's damage. Please review photo number six. That would be photo number six with the damage. I also power it up, showing the powering up phase. There's the first screen. Yes, Windows XP, I know, very old. And there's the software being booted up. And then there is the login screen. 
Um, and that's all I know about these. Again, here is the back, the uh, all the terminals and connectors, and there is the serial number and model number. Um, I didn't make a whole lot of money on this, probably made about 20 bucks. I do 50-50 split on consignment items, anything under $100, anything over $100, it goes down from there. So that wasn't a bad sale. It was sort of quick. Oop. Wrong key, sorry. <laughs> Two more items left, guys. Sorry, this is taking a little longer. I just want to make sure I give you guys some tips and tricks. I'll show you there's money out there in parts. Like another item I got for free with a bunch of lawnmowers somebody gave me. This sat in my store for about four or five months, what they call a long tail sale. Um, I was able to, let me show you, take pictures of everything I could. I cleaned this up pretty good. Put some um, vinyl cleaner on it and then just put some tire protectant on everything and it came out pretty good. I don't think I have any model numbers. I couldn't get it all. Um, I was able to, here, I was able to unbolt the handle and get the handle down a little bit. It was still in a huge, huge box. Thankfully, it just went down to Florida. I think it went out um, post office, uh, parcel post for like $19, but I insured it because you don't get insurance on parcel post. Priority mail, you get a $50 free insurance on that. And everything else, you don't get insurance on. So remember that. I used to think you got insurance on so many other ones, but you don't. It was working. I did let it run for about a half an hour in my garage to make sure it ran. I was actually going to keep this for myself, but eh, I like the money. Um, one more item. Oh, no, that's it. I'm sorry. Yes, that's our first item back again. So I hope you <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please hit that old thumbs up button, that like button on the video, and please subscribe to my channel. I'm always giving tips on how to part out things, what kind of money I make on parting out things, tips and tricks on shipping, eBay sales, etc. Like you see in the video. I try and post one of these videos once a week of what I sold the previous week. I also sell on Amazon and Facebook and some other online venues. I also do training on eBay, small group, large group, what a classroom, whatever you got. I've done training online using uh, vehicles like Zoom and Skype. I also run the eBay Raleigh, Raleigh eBay meetup group. We meet second Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. to 845. Look that up on, eBay, on um, meetup or it's also in the links below. You'll see all that stuff. Also have an online eBay tutorial, a couple hours long, broken up into 20 minute sessions for the beginner and even the experienced people can learn some stuff from it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please have a great day and happy sales on eBay, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.